Hello and welcome to today's video. Do you fancy a trip back to uh, 1995? 1995 I was taking my GCSEs and uh, for GCSEs we were actually allowed to take into uh, the examination a calculator. Now I don't have the exact calculator or the exact uh, actual calculator that I had back then, but I do have the same model that I did have back then. Now it was a Casio FX100 that looked like this, which I bought for around twelve to fifteen pounds in 1993. Not sure what that would be adjusted for inflation. But uh, I will pop something up on the screen now to give you the adjusted for inflation price. And for GCSE maths, it was a perfectly capable calculator. It would do everything that uh, I could possibly ask of it. It also introduced me to the concept of hexadecimal. So I had, and I don't have the exact manual, but I had a manual like this, uh, which would have been for the FX100. And I went from cover to cover testing out in the English section all of the various functions that um, you would actually get. So I actually learnt quite a lot about what the calculator could actually do. Today's video is actually going to be about replacing the battery in the calculator. So it says you have to replace the battery once every couple of years. So I'm not sure when this one was last done. So I bought this one off eBay fairly recently. So the calculator itself is in this protective hard case, which is rather good, and does actually protect the calculator from a fall from at least a first floor window. Uh, there were some children at school who were less than pleasant, let's say, and they did manage to steal my calculator and throw it out of a uh, first floor window. It landed in some bushes and was completely unharmed. So. You know, it is a good idea to, if you can, to actually have the case with it because it really does protect the calculator itself. Popping it out of the case is fairly simple. There is a little bit down here that you can get your thumb into and you can sort of push it out of the way. You can also bend the case back like so. Then we can tuck our finger in and flip the calculator out. As you can see, the main bulk of all of the logic of the calculator is actually contained within this section here. All of this, certainly this, is just the membrane for the actual buttons on the calculator. So if you look at, say, one of the other Casio models that we were looking at recently, the Personal M1, which is this one, you can really see how far they've actually come whereby pretty much the entire calculator was taken up with various logic circuitry whereas on this one you had a much lower power consumption display and you could run everything off of a single battery rather than the two batteries needed for this one and the four batteries needed for this one So, let's get started with this one. We'll need to remove some of the small screws on the back to be able to separate the case. So I've actually loosened off all six of the screws. One, two, three, four, five and six. And that allows me to gently prise apart the front panel from the rest of the case itself. We've got the back panel here and we should be able to gently does it, drives it apart and there we have it. That's just the screws falling out. Now it looks like I've actually gotten here just in time even though this battery is working it does appear to be swelling slightly and causing a bit of corrosion on these terminals so the best thing to do is to get that out of there immediately you can actually see how everything works you have this membrane here 
you have the LCD panel here and it looks like all of the logic is within this integrated circuit here. So really it's a lot less complicated than the last one. You have this capacitor here which I assume is just serving the display. So really far less complex inside than uh, the earlier model. Far less going on, a lot more integrated. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is to get that battery out. So I do not want that in there for any longer than it needs to be. And that is quite grotty. Right, I can't see any date of manufacturer unless 0305 is the date of manufacture. But that is one scabby looking battery. A little bit of crystallisation around here. So what I'm going to do is get a bit of a bit of white vinegar and give that a bit of a clean up. Just out of shot I have some deionized water, small amount of white vinegar and some isopropyl. So with the white vinegar ideally I should have some cotton buds to do this but I don't so I'm going to ball up a piece of tissue lightly dip it into the white vinegar and then just apply said vinegar direct to the problem areas and look at that pretty much almost immediately you're getting a reaction so all of the alkaline build up is being neutralized by the white vinegar So I might need to get another bit of tissue and do the same for the other side. Let's have a quick look at that, see how that is. There's still a little bit in here which we need to deal with, but let's sort out the other side first and then we can probably get a screwdriver into there to deal with the other little crystals which seem to have built up. There we are. There we go. So, this section here now. So, a little dab of white vinegar onto the tissue and there we go. That's Hopefully sorting that out. Yeah, that's making that a lot easier to shift. That's out of the way. Perfect. There we go. see what it does to the battery itself. Look at that. Pretty much strips off the alkaline on the bottom of the battery. There we are. And you can see that being neutralised in the vinegar itself. So the battery's going in the bin. But you can actually, if you have a look, in there you can see little bits of alkaline that have come off being neutralized by the uh, by the vinegar itself right the next thing that I want to do is to just give this a bit more of a clean up possibly to be honest with you going in here with this scraping these bits out Get rid of those. 
Get rid of that. Okay, it seems to be coming together. Or if you have some kind of if you have some compressed air, probably a good idea to use that to do what I just did. However, my method has for the most part also worked. There we go. And that is nearly, nearly done. Right, there we go. So, next thing I want to do is to get some of the deionized water onto another tissue. There we are, that's soaked in nicely. Use the deionized water just to clean out the various little areas, such as the housing for the battery. Also, just give these terminals a bit of a wipe. And there we go. So, flip it over, check everything's okay still. Looking fine. And all we need to do now is just clean up the area. I was working on to get the battery out of the way that will be going in to be disposed of shortly. Let's move everything else out of harm's way and we can start reassembling. So I have a new battery to go in and the battery orientation is marked so we're looking at this side for positive we go. Another quick blow. We'll put these two sides back together. Actually, that's a very good point. Before I forget, let's clean that out in there. So let's bring up my white vinegar again into here. There we go, and into there. Pretty much immediately. See that fizzing off a treat. So that is mostly that sorted. Let's use a screwdriver just to get in there a little bit and get some of those crystalline deposits. That's done. See that fizzing away nicely. Don't be like me, use PPE. That's uh, what I can say to not using gloves. <clears throat> and another little wipe out with the tissue just to get rid of that excess vinegar. There we go, coming along nicely. And then a final wipe down. Actually use the isopropyl this part. Final wipe down with the with the alcohol. And there we go. There we are, all sorted. All that remains now is once this has dried out, 
which if you shake it around in the air like so it does actually dry it quite quickly you can quite easily and quite safely put all of this back together so the best way to put it back together is to pop this on like so and the whole thing should starting at the back here come together like that down to the bottom of the unit and it should clip together like so as well oh, I've accidentally turned it on and if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 still working as well and off right let's put the screws back in and then we're ready to put it back in its case and there we go back in the case and ready to go so we'll just turn it on it looks like I still have something in memory let's have a look memory recall looks like I have pi in memory by the looks of it let's uh, cancel that Hello in memory and there we go Ah, uh, I remember this, yeah. <laughs> so let's just check it still can do some simple sums. Three times three. Sorry, three times three is nine. So it can still do that. Twelve times two is twenty-four. It can still do that as well. So there we go. The main takeaway of this video is if you do have older devices like this calculator which do use um, normal battery cells in this case a double A cell it is a good idea to periodically strip them apart and replace the battery before the battery can actually leak if you don't replace the battery and it does leak it can cause quite a lot of damage um, I have other videos of a of another RISC PC 600 funny enough like this one behind which I have, which uh, just shows the extent of damage that can be done by a, um, an alkaline battery cell. Anyway, if you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe because I have more interesting hobby related videos coming up. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, do everything else that they tell you to do when you're doing YouTube videos. And thank you very much for watching. See you next time.